Welcome back to a new retro game review from the Wired Nerdy Podcast. Today, we're piloting our way into the 16-bit world of Mech Warrior for the Super Nintendo, a game that'll take you back to the good old days of mech-on-mech -mech action, with a dash of intergalactic revenge. Released in 1993 by Activision, Mech Warrior brought the epic universe of Battletech to the home console. Picture this. You're a mercenary named Gideon Braver Vandenberg. Not only does he have an incredibly cool name, but he's also on a mission to avenge his family, taken down by a rival mercenary band called the Darkwing Lance. And to do that, you need to build up your very own mech army, accepting contracts and taking on missions that range from protecting convoys to outright assaults. In essence, it's a mix of revenge plot and a mercenary's handbook, all wrapped up in that gritty, metal-crunching goodness. Now, let's talk gameplay. Unlike your typical platformer or RPG of the era, Mech Warrior is unique because it's a first-person cockpit shooter. Yes, you heard that right. In 1993, players were plopped right into the pilot seat, seeing the battlefield through the eyes of their hulking battle mech. The visuals are impressive for the Super Nintendo, with a variety of terrain types, cityscapes, and, of course, massive enemy mechs that will stop at nothing to turn you into scrap metal. There's a certain thrill to stomping around in a 75-ton war machine, seeing the landscape roll by, and having that satisfying thud of your mech's steps resonate with each movement. The game's controls, while a bit clunky by today's standards, still offered a deep experience. You had to manage your mech's heat, choose your weapons wisely, and switch up your tactics on the fly because overheating in the middle of a firefight is a fast ticket to failure. You've got four different mechs to choose from, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. The Shadowhawk, for instance, is versatile, while the Battlemaster brings the heavy guns and is perfect for those moments when you just need to rain destruction. And speaking of destruction, the weapon variety here is fantastic. From lasers to autocannons, the arsenal offers just enough choice to keep things interesting without overwhelming players. But what really sets Mech Warrior apart is its strategic elements. It's not all about blasting away at enemies. You've got to make credits, upgrade your mech, and keep track of contracts. Will you defend a city for a wealthy employer or take a high-risk bounty hunt that promises big rewards? Each decision pushes you further into this gritty mercenary lifestyle, adding layers to the simple revenge story. And hey, who could forget the iconic contract selection screen? It's classic 90s in all the best ways. It is simple, but filled with the promise of adventure. The contracts you pick determine how quickly you'll get the chance to take on the dark wing lance, giving players a sense of control over the story. Visually, the game does what it can within the Super Nintendo's limitations. Explosions are pixelated and glorious, and enemies appear as sprite-based hulks lumbering across the screen. It has that charming, retro blockiness that will make you nostalgic for a time when imagination filled in the gaps. Of course, it's not all perfect. The pace can be slow, and if you're expecting Gundam level speed, well, you might be disappointed. This game is about the weight of your decisions and your mech, literally and figuratively. Plus, the learning curve can be a bit steep, especially if you're not used to managing heat or ammunition in real-time combat. But for those willing to dive in, Mech Warrior offers a unique blend of strategy, action, and storytelling. It is a testament to the ambition of early 90s game developers. It's a must-play for fans of mechs, the Battletech universe, or anyone looking to experience a piece of gaming history that dared to do something different. So there you have it, Mech Warrior for the Super Nintendo, a mech-filled, laser-blasting, contract-negotiating adventure where revenge really is best served with a side of autocannon fire. Thanks for joining me on this retro ride. If you enjoyed this review, don't forget to power up that like button and hit subscribe for more trips down memory lane. We also have a weekly long-form podcast you might enjoy. Until next time, keep those reactors running cool, and may your aim always be true. This is the Wired Nerdy Podcast team.
signing off.